Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week, I'm going to show you one of my absolute favorite tricks I've been doing lately. Uh, this is great for broadcast, for your studio. You could use it live if you have the right equipment. Um, but this is a way to use a dynamic EQ to really, really clean up your drums better than a gate ever can. So check it out. So here we have a snare that I recorded at a recent rehearsal. Um, and just check out how much bleed we have in here um, from the hi-hat. So that's just ridiculous, um, and that's just the snare. So uh, as you'll hear later on, we have overhead set up with a nice stereo image, and that really just ruins it because you get all that hi-hat, and then when the crash and the ride get going, they all are in the center, and they sound terrible. <laughs> um, so what we could do is throw on a gate. Um, so I'm going to go in here and try the C1 uh, compressor gate. Um, and that would sound something like this. And that gets rid of our, uh, our hi-hat, but it's also making the snare really, really um, squash sounding um, uh, or choked sounding because there's such a fast release that's happening on here. Now, if I give it a longer release... we get more of the natural uh, sustain of the snare, but you can hear those hi-hats are starting to sneak in right there. And this is on a pretty soft part of the song, so it gets even worse when uh, they're going crazy on the crash or the ride. Um, so instead of using a gate, what we're going to do is we're going to use one of my favorite tools. This is a multi-band, I'm sorry, a uh, dynamic EQ. Uh, called the Waves F6. Uh, and you can do this with other uh, similar EQs, uh, but this guy just really, really works well for this. Um, so I'm going to try to make this video really quick, so I'm going to just be moving with it. And then uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in, uh, in the comment section below. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this number six band here, we're going to crank it down, we're going to turn it into a high shelf, uh, and let's adjust this cue here so it's not necessarily a resonant shelf. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to just suck out all that uh, high end from the cymbals, somewhere between uh, 500 and 1K and up. Um, now, the dynamic EQ, what's really special about this is it has properties of a compressor or an expander, either upward or downward. Um, so what we want this to do is obviously this EQ would sound terrible because it's going to be sucking out all the high end and the snare is going to sound really dull. What we want to have happen is every time the snare hits, we want this EQ to undo itself very quickly. Um, so what I can do is looking at the settings down here, I can go from my gain setting, which is set to negative 18. I'm going to do the opposite with my range. I'm going to set it to positive 18. Uh, I'm going to set my attack as fast as it can go. And release, you can play around with this and get different effects. Um, we're going to do about 30 milliseconds today. And for this release control to actually be adjustable, we need to go to global release and change it from arc to manual mode. Now that we're in manual, the release will actually have an effect. Uh, and then finally, over where it says sign chain uh, mode, SC mode down here, we're going to switch from split mode, which is only listening to these frequencies, to wideband, so it's affecting these frequencies, but it's listening to the entire snare drum. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, let you hear that first without anything on it. It's just that, that shelf. So you can hear the hi-hat's a lot quieter, but also we've lost all the good stuff from the snare. Um, so now I'm going to play that again, and I'm going to lower the threshold, and we should start to hear... Um, that initial stick hit of the stair start to come back. So if you notice up here this little blue button, I'm going to turn that on and off so you can hear what's happening here. So here's on, off, off. 
So you can hear there's a lot of high end that comes in without it in there. Um, so now what we want to do is get rid of the rest of what's going on here, but we want to be able to do that at a slower rate. So that's the whole point of this trick is that we can make this high end stuff work very quickly. So it comes and goes, um, and that's really about it. But our lower end stuff, our sustain, we want to be a little bit more gradual with how that fades out so that we get some of those overtones and everything from the snare. It sounds more natural. Um, so there's a couple ways you could do this. You could put a gate after this plugin, just like we were doing before, and give it a longer release. Uh, or if you want to try and do it all in the same plugin, we can do basically the same thing here. We're going to take the band one here. We're going to make this a low shelf. And we're going to crank it all the way up so it's effectively acting like a uh, just a regular com um, compressor. Um, and so what we're going to do the same thing. We got our gain at negative 18. We'll put range at positive 18. Attack all the way down, and we'll put the release. I think somewhere around like a hundred to start with. And again, you can make that longer and get more of the overtones coming through. And now these two things we did between band one and band six are going to work at the same time. Um, but because band six um, is clamping back down really quickly and band one is taking longer, uh, you're going to hear the effect of your highs be more affected by band six. So let's take a listen to that. We'll hit play and I'll start lowering down that threshold. You start, should start hearing the, uh, the rest of the snare kind of come back in. All right, so here's the entire thing off. And back on. So huge, huge difference from what we had before. Um, so now we can hear that. Let's, let's throw back in our bottom snare mic, which is going to give us back some more of those ghost notes and everything um, that we've kind of lost in this process. I like to have my top snare be pretty uh, pretty tight sounding because I tend to put my my reverbs on that more so than anything else. Um, and my bottom snare, uh, I don't hardly gate or do any of this kind of stuff at all. So when you put the two together, you get a nice natural sound. The snare top's going to sound almost like a sample without being a sample. Uh, and the snare bottom's going to give you all your ghost notes back. So let's hear that with and without um, the, I'm sorry, with the snare bottom as well and the overheads. Uh, and while it's going, watch my, my mouse on this blue button. I'll turn um, that plug-in off. And when you do so, especially if you're listening in earbuds, um, you're going to hear when it's on, the overheads are where we're hearing our cymbals. And they're panned hard left and hard right. So the hi-hats, you know, over more on your left side uh, and everything else is kind of, you know, on the right or where it's going to be for depending on what cymbal he's hitting. Um, and then when I turn this off, it all kind of monoizes and just sounds really kind of mid rangey and gross because now we're hearing it from the overheads and the snare. And because the snare is so prominent in the mix, it's just kind of ruining the imaging of everything else. So again, I'll start this playing with it on and then watch the blue light to see where it turns off. And this is a great trick because it works not just on snare, um, but on everything. So uh, I'm going to play for you uh, my entire drum mix here. So I've got the same thing happening on the kick, which, believe it or not, picks up a lot of cymbals, depending on how you place your kick mic uh, and how bright you want it. I like a nice bright kick. Um, and then also on the toms, and we only have two toms in here. So um, here is the entire kit. Here it is without the overhead channel, so you can hear how tight this is. And just so you can hear that in effect, I'm going to take all these. Now, this is going to turn off our, our gate, um, but it's also going to turn off our EQ, so just be aware of that. 
Um, but I'm going to just turn all those Studio Rack plugins off at the same time and listen to just how much cymbals come in in this spot where they're just doing hi-hat. So the hi-hat now sounds like a center. It sounds all out of whack because of all the, the phasing issues that are happening from all these mics coming in together. Um, and, uh, and that snare uh, ring is just out of control. The rack tom is resonating like crazy just because of the way the, the, uh, the drum is tuned. And then with that plugging on... And again, let's hear that with our... Overheads, I'll do the same thing. I'll leave the overheads on while it's playing. I'll turn off all these plugins and listen to how the overheads get screwed up. Game changer. It's amazing how much of a difference that can make. Um, so I hope that was helpful for you guys. Uh, there are a lot of you, ways you can use this. Uh, even for things more than just drums, but drums work really well because uh, they're, you know, they're so here or there with the transient of hitting it with a stick. Um, but really, really great tip. Um, so I hope it's helpful for you guys. If you have any questions or other suggestions of maybe things other than the F6 that work well for this, uh, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, have a great week.